Hey there, LGBTQIA plus fam, allies, and haters. I'm Trace, this is Uno Dose of Trace, and I've been thinking. I know that Pride Month is officially over and all, I hope you had a great Pride, but people should be loud and proud of their openness and acceptance all year. So even though I'm a bit late to the Pride party with this paper, I've been pondering this for a bit. A, a bit. Transgender animals. Let's talk about it. Really quick before we get into it, click the subscribe and the bell because YouTube has decided that clicking sub doesn't mean you actually wanna see videos. You need to click the bell for that. True story, definitely do it. Before we get into trans animals though, I wanna mention a few things. One, I have a bachelor's in science in psychology, which I got with departmental honors. And two, while getting that degree, I had a practicum and chose sexual health peer education. I'm not an expert but I do have some experience researching and thinking about why we humans do the things we do apart from my personal feelings on the matter. So let's just get that out of the way. C, I think we should start this conversation by defining some terms. <laughs> Sex and gender. According to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, sex is the sum of the structural, functional, and sometimes behavioral characteristics of organisms that distinguish males from females, i.e. sex is a physical thing. It's assigned to you at birth by a doctor who looks at your genitalia and documents your sex, usually based on that alone. It can also be indicated by chromosomes or genetics, especially in IVF situations, but importantly, biology is messy, and those halves don't always hold. Just because you have those things doesn't mean you feel that way. But we're not gonna talk about that too much in this video. Now, same dictionary, gender. It's an adjective, behavioral, cultural, or psychological traits typically associated with one sex, i.e. gender is a social thing. We in the United States tend to use the term interchangeably, gender and sex, sex and gender, but they're not the same thing. I think we use gender to describe sex because people don't like using the word sex in polite conversation. They think it's dirty or vulgar, which I totally get. I grew up in the Midwest too, but again, they're not the same thing. Sex is physical, gender is socio-behavioral. So those of you who used to listen to my podcast, you might know that I love etymology, and the word sex comes from the Middle English and Latin, and has always meant the categorization of male or female. But gender's etymology actually comes from describing language. Gendered language is a common occurrence in romance languages, so people know who or what you're describing. In Spanish, for example, you would say el or ella, he or she, but you'd also say profesor or profesora. Gender's definition since Middle English has been how we talk about sex. Gender didn't mean sex but it did describe it, which means, like all language, it has changed, evolved, and updated to match society's needs. So in your head, I hope you have now taken sex and gender and separated them, physical, socio-behavioral. Sidebar, gender in romance languages is also fascinating and I highly encourage you to read up on it because the beach in Spanish, for example, is la playa, which is feminine for some reason, and teatro or theater is masculine for some reason. But why? I don't know. Maybe you do. Look it up, let me know. Anyway. And sidebar, the American Psychological Association, not exactly a bastion of progressiveness or radical thinking, defines transgender as, quote, an umbrella term for persons whose gender identity, gender expression, or behavior does not conform to that typically associated with the sex to which they were assigned at birth. Transgender is a term meaning the gender of a person is different from their sex assignment at birth. If you take one thing from this video, it is that sex and gender are different. When we are talking about sex, we are commonly talking biology. But when we're talking about gender, or say transgender, we're commonly talking about psychology, society, and self. I've said this three times, I really don't wanna say it again. So, transgender animals. Animals don't often sit back and think about their gender in that way. It just happens to them. Snakes, lizards, beetles, fish, birds, and some mammals all have documented cases where a male or female changes what they call their gender expression. Which reminds me, we should probably define those terms as well. Gender identity and expression. Gender identity is what some psychologists would call covert behavior. Behavior you cannot directly observe, it's inside the brain. Because gender describes how someone feels, not their physical sex, they aren't tied together. So this can mean some people have a physical sex that doesn't match their gender identity. Gender expression, on the other hand, is a way for people to overtly express this covert behavior. They may change their clothing, their hair, or their physical appearance. They might even get surgery to help their overt expression align with their covert identity. But not always, everyone is different. We don't know if animals have any gender identity, but they definitely have gender expression. And sometimes that expression has transitioned from birth sex to another gender, because they're not perfectly tied together. One famous example is this lion. We all know that lions look like this, thanks to Disney's recent documentary, <coughs> Lion King. Males grow manes, while females remain sleek. 
They drink water all seductively. What is happening? Memorary lives in Botswana, and though this lion has a mane, she ain't a lion, she's a lioness, with the gender expression of a male lion. And it's pretty intense. She's roaring, she's mounting other lionesses. Yeah, a lion's mane is normally used to attract females, like homeless chic for some humans right now. So this gender expression doesn't actually match sex. It's rare and interesting in lion behavior, but not singular, it does happen. Why? No one actually knows, but they think it has to do with an excess of testosterone in her body. Researchers don't have a lot of information about gender bending lions. What they do know is they behave a bit like lionesses and a bit like lions, mating and hunting like females, but roaring and scent marking like males. This lion was seen killing the cubs of a neighboring pride even after their neighbors stole a kill. Cub killing is definitely not a normal female behavior, more a male behavior, but not in this case. Clownfish are a common aquatic example of transgender animals, but they don't just change expression, they also are able to spawn and carry offspring because they change sex. All the little Nemones are actually male presenting hermaphrodites. When the female of a school dies, the dominant male binge eats and becomes a female of the group, literally. She, note the pronoun change there, she has transitioned and chooses a partner from the school who becomes then the dominant male and they go back to one to do the whole thing again. We would call that a transition, where a gender expression would change from male to female or female to male. Rasses also follow this pattern, but instead of transitioning from M to F, they go female to male, F to M. When the new male Ras takes over as the leader of the school of females, then they're the big boss. Another example is the Marsh Harrier, a Euro-African bird of prey. This bad boy eats frogs and small mammals and other birds. It's badass. It summers in the UK and winters in Africa. Class. Males are brown, ginger, and gray with black wingtips, but not always. And in fact, 40% of males look and act like the chocolate brown, yellow crowned females of the species. Their gender expression is different. Experts think some of the males look female because the species are highly territorial, and the males that look female can breed without fighting off the other males. Gender expression for the win. Spotted hyenas are one of the most amazing animals in the gender expression community because they have pseudo penises. Yeah. The females have the pseudo penis, and it looks so convincing, just looking at a spotted hyena cannot tell you their sex. Female hyenas can get erections and copulate and urinate. They can even birth through the pseudo penis. The pseudo penis ain't a dick though, it's a clitoris. See, even in humans, the clitoris and penis come from the same fetal tissue. It's called a homologous organ, but in this case, it's pretty extreme. The swollen clitoris looks a lot like a penis, and the labia or folds of the vulva form what look like testes. It's an extraordinary example of transitioned gender expression in the animal kingdom. There are a lot of animals that don't don't have sex and gender in full alignment 100% of the time, and others that transition from one gender expression or actual sex to another. Sometimes it's due to an environmental change, like the loss of a dominant mate, which triggers hormonal changes, and other times it's predetermined by evolution, but it exists, and it's real, and it's natural. But we humans, we aren't fish, we aren't birds, we aren't even lions, we're primates. We're more advanced, some would say. Are we subject to these same laws of nature? Is the male, female, and primates less zero one or more? There are advanced primate examples of socio-behavioral unmatching of sex and gender. Bonobos and chimps share a lot of their DNA with us, so they looked into their gender expression. In the wild, chimps and bonobos are very different. Chimp males are aggressive, territorial, political leaders of their groups, while females are focused on nurturing offspring and social relationships. With bonobos groups, the females are in the lead and the members are less violent, more polygamous across the board. They would share food and sex rather than fight. And the two species are different, but they are 99.6% genetically identical. Researchers say this is a pretty strong example of differing gender expression in primates, but they took it a bit further by studying their social grooming behavior in zoos. In in the wild, social grooming is more sex determinant. Chimps are more male-male social grooming oriented, for example. But Discover Magazine wrote about research in this area, quote, zoo living apes' grooming seem to be more individual's history and personality related rather than sex related. Neither species showed the sex typical grooming patterns displayed by their wild counterparts, which is solid evidence that certain sex roles were at least partially environmentally determined in these species. To break that down, they're essentially saying they expressed their gender differently. It's not a one-to-one, -one, but a fascinating story nonetheless, and shows that even animals have complex relationships with their own identities, expressions, and sexualities. Gender expression is an intricate set of social and biological cues, individual to each animal and person, and science seems to show it is not a choice, but biological and environmental. For example, identical twins are more likely than fraternal twins to be transgender together. And MRI scans of people who say their gender identity doesn't match their sex show the brain more closely resembles their identified sex than the one that they were assigned at birth. 
and this starts very young. Quick reminder, by the way, sex is assigned because no one checks your chromosomes and DNA when you're born. Doctors look at external genitalia and decide sex. Biology is complicated and that is not a 100% successful strategy. <laughs> I put together this video because for some reason, people tend to give animals some kind of deference that we don't give to humans. When an animal does something, we call it natural. When a human does it, it's an agenda. We tend to forget that humans are animals. We are part of the animal kingdom and therefore aren't the black and white zero and one sexuality and communication that some people wish we could be. Biology is almost never binary and is almost always a continuum or spectrum of beautiful, messy evolution, much of which we don't entirely understand. In 2014, one in six people knew a fellow human who was openly transgender. By 2016, it was one in three, and that's huge. But it's not like there are more transgender people now, it's just that more people are stepping into the light. This is not unlike the openness movements of the 90s and the aughts with the lesbian, gay, and sometimes bisexual communities. Estimates of transgender individuals in the US population is something like 0.3%. We're about a million people. The average American high school has 752 people. So that means there are two or three people in every school that see the T in LGBT and feel something. In 2019, the United Nations World Health Organization finally accepted a revised classification of diseases which removed gender identity disorder from its list of mental illnesses. Though, interesting sidebar, it added gaming disorder to the list. Maybe we'll have to make a video about that. LGBTQIA is an acronym to describe the complicated relationship humanity has with our own gender expression. Each letter encapsulates the millions of experiences that Americans and many more millions around the world have. And that's normal. Animals have this, humans have this, everyone has this. And biology and evolution is amazing. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Let me know what you thought of the video in the comments. And I am Trace. I'll see you in the future.